Good evening. What's going on, IDJ Now fam? Welcome back once again. Actually, not only welcome back to our Facebook viewers, welcome for the first time tonight, YouTube live viewers. I love it. Justin, What's we have YouTube? grown. Fifth we're episode, we're, we're everywhere. growing. We're on fire. <laughs> we're everywhere. Good to see you, Good to see you again. What's Although up, we're, we're in different rooms, different buildings, different uh, towns, but we're making it happen. We're all over the place, my friend. How are you it's feeling? Good. How are you staying well? I'm staying well. I'm I'm brushing and flossing daily as it's required. I put product in my hair today. I actually brushed my beard. Uh, I put some tequila lime uh, beard oil in here. I feel good today. You look good. You look good. It's good to see you. Yeah, virtually, but like, good to see you I, nonetheless. I have a little unicorn hair happening here, but I don't mind. I'm good. I'm good with it. So yeah. here we are once again. Uh, like I said, we're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. We're going worldwide. We're going global. Who knows? Maybe Twitch next. Maybe Snapchat. We'll do it in 15-second in increments. Who knows? <laughs> we got an but, audience you know first. We need an audience first there. <laughs> <laughs> I was th I was thinking earlier, you know, we've been doing this now. We're five episodes in and nobody really knows who we are and what we do for the company. You know, obviously we do these live streams and we have a little information. So, Justin, you know, not only are our national sales manager, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about what else you do as far as your history of DJing and what, you know, how long you've been for the company and just go on. Wow. I, um... I think the best way to sum it up, Kevin, I want to keep it brief, is every day I wake up and I say to myself, holy cow, I turned being a DJ into a career. And that's really what it is. I am a DJ who has taken his time and energy and put it towards selling, educating, uh, informing, and helping other DJs uh, get their gear, get the best gear, get the gear that's right for them. Um, and not only have I grown, but our, of course our company has grown and, um, I've, uh, I've been a part of that and been a very proud part of that. Uh, it's really been a great uh, thing for me and, and, uh, thanks for asking, man. I appreciate it. Believe it or yeah, not, yeah. I started when I was, when I was 17, Kevin, 17. Uh, it's crazy. Two, two years ago, my friend, I've been with the company for two years. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, it's funny. I think I think about it and, and how I started. And I, look, I was a kid who loved heavy metal music, and DJing was probably the farthest thing from my from my world. But I started when I was uh, twelve years old, and then, gosh, about sixteen years ago, I started working here officially, and it's been one heck of a ride. You know, running the retail stores as a district manager, I am an encyclopedia of useless facts on products we don't sell and products we do sell, and I just love to press buttons and make a product make sounds it's not supposed to. Legally. Remind, remind me again, um, how long have you been DJing and you mostly did like mobile and private events, right? I started DJing well, as a roadie in 1992 and then was doing weddings, uh, two man shows uh, in 93. So I was 12, 13, um, doing mobile stuff till about 16, 17, then would sneak into clubs, have a, a lot of great friends that gave me some opportunities and chances and people just thought I was older anyway. So we just roll with it for a while. Nothing like celebrating your 18th birthday, pretending you're 21 with your mom, right? Doesn't wow. get any better than that. Yeah. So it's funny. <laughs> I, I started at 15. Um, I got the job at IDJ Now by shopping at the record store that used to be in IDJ Now. Uh, built up my Jay record. Built up my system. I bought some used stuff. I bought stuff piecemeal. And as you say, a funny story about age, I was working by the time I was 18 at the China Club in New York City. They wouldn't even let me in one night when I was going to DJ because I wasn't old enough to get in the place. I had to have the promoter sure. come down. So, yeah, I've been doing this a while. Uh, I'm a DJ at heart. I've said that before. Um, I love music and I really just love to help people. I think it is part of our core values here at IDJ now. And you know what's funny? As I talk to a lot of the people over at Electro Voice, Kev, it seems like that's a lot of their core values as well. And it's interesting yeah. that we have them on with us tonight. Yeah. And you know what? I got to say, it's been a, a very amazing uh, experience here. We've been through a lot together as a company, as a family, I like to consider us. And, you know, before we get started, before we bring out Steve and Mike, I do, as always, want to say thank you so much to all of our frontline healthcare um, first responder, all of our essential workers out there that are holding it down for us. and of course, our warehouse team that is still working hard every day to get packages out, delivered as quick and uh, and as accurate as that we can. And, and I say they're they're absolutely doing a, an amazing job right now. 
And also I got to send some love out to my staff uh, who is just chomping at the bit for the day that we can get these retail stores back open. I'm getting your guys calls and your emails and, and, you know, uh, look, uh, we're all, we're all, we miss these guys. We miss these guys. We we miss you as much as you miss us. And you can call me as many times as you want. Uh, You can threaten me. You can offer me unbelievable amounts of money. I just can't let you in right now. It just, just ain't going to happen, but you can visit our website and we'll, we'll be more than happy to make a great deal for you. Yeah, absolutely. Kevin has literally had to uh, politely tell people to to leave because they want to get into the store so bad. They're 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 so ready to to get back into it. You know what I mean? So uh, it's which is uh, a great sign. We have time. look, we have a passionate customer base, and I absolutely love it. And I, I would I wouldn't want anything less. Um, which brings us to one of our great partners, um, who I know these guys are very passionate about what they do. Uh, they put out a great product. And as you can see, I have a very small office and a small desk, so I could not fit the full Evolve 50 and 30 system in here, but I tried. I tried. That's all that matters. And, it looks good. May, maybe I could job. put in a, a request for a larger office or a larger desk. I don't know. Rob, Brian, you guys watch? Um, we'll never, we never know. But let's bring them out. We got Mike Duso and Steve. I'm not even going to try to butcher Steve's last name because I, I know I will. <laughs> and uh, what's going on, Mike? What's going on, Steve? Hey, Cal. Yeah, how are you? What's up, gentlemen? Good to, good I to just see you guys. Good. And we're coming in from New Jersey and Minnesota tonight, Minnesota, right? Minnesota, you know. <laughs> Minnesota. So yeah, man. Give some give give all of our audience some feedback. Whoa, Justin's going wild, man, with the slides already. Steve is a key accounts manager for Electric Voice. He runs, uh, does AV and live sound uh, reinforcement. He, of course, as you can tell by the guitars on the back wall, is a musician as well. Uh, and Mike is the Electric Voice marketing manager for North America. He spent a good decade, I love decades, more than 10 years. It just sounds, sounds more official. Oh. Um, working as a radio club and mobile DJ. And Mike, you've been with EV for, for a few years. A long I'll, time. I'll say, <laughs> Yeah, sixteen years in June. So yeah, so about the same same as uh, I've been here, and and I know we were speaking earlier. I just <laughs> I see Brian Marsh said no way. I don't know if that's about my office or how long we've been here. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I had the privilege of coming out to EV. God, it's got to be nine, ten years ago to, for a training. I use the term training loosely. Um, <laughs> what is a great experience to see the factory to walk into the anechoic chamber, which people have probably no idea what that is. But to see the the operation, everything that goes on Electro Voice and how speakers are manufactured and, and the fact that every cabinet has a speaker that's designed for it. It's not just pull a speaker off the shelf and throw it in. And, and of course, I'll let you go into that. But thank you guys so much for coming on tonight. We're going to have a lot of fun and we're going to throw a lot of information. As always, I know Justin's going to give the uh, ring the bell whole thing because I don't know how that works. But if you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below or next to you, wherever it is. And if we get to it, we get to it. Yeah, well, thanks yeah. for having us, man. We're we're excited, and um, you know, we're trying to stay busy and 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 uh, get back to work with with you guys as well. We can't wait, and um, you know, it's only a matter of time here, and, and things will come together. So so we're excited, but uh, thanks for for uh, sharing this time with us. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Um, I know we have a lot of things to go over tonight. If you guys aren't familiar with Electro Voice, they've been around for a little over 90 years, if not way over 90 years. Um, you know, we're really talking about loudspeakers tonight. You can see they have some microphones and maybe we'll do another live stream and talk about their amazing wireless systems. But we're going to talk about, um, you know, uh, portable powered column, li- uh, line array column speakers, whatever you want to call them. And of course, uh, point source boxes. So uh, Mike, I'll let you start off and I'll interrupt you as we go. Yeah, we've, I mean, we've got a lot, lot to get through. So, you know, um, I, I think this is a really good structure because one of the biggest, you know, uh, problems yet benefits that we have at EV is we, we build so much stuff, right? We've got, um, loudspeakers nearly at every price point and application you can think of. So um, sometimes there is some confusion as to, hey, what's the difference between this one and that one and this one and that one, right? Um, so our, our hope is that that we can we can talk through, uh, you know, f- some of the more major differences that, that will set them apart from each other um, and answer any questions anybody has. But I kind of wanted to start with laying a little bit of background on Electrovoice itself because um, EV, 
has really only been in like the retail segment um, for maybe 10 years or so. Um, traditionally, we've really focused on the professional market, high-end touring, um, rental installations, things like that. Um, but we've opened ourselves up to a whole new world uh, in the last 10 years or so and, and, and done really, really well. And a lot of that is, is really focused on the DJ market. One of the, th one of the things that, that, that I wanted to do when I started working with EV as, as the marketing manager was focus more on the DJ. Um, you know, traditionally, I think a lot of PA companies were, were looking at uh, DJs as kind of this other category, and they were really focused on musicians. Not to say that musicians aren't important, but, you know, when you really think about it, uh, musicians spend the vast majority of their money on instruments, right? That That's right. the passion. Uh, I, you know, Steve back there collects 500 guitars, right? <laughs> but you probably only have one or two PAs, right? Um, where DJs are, are kind of the opposite, right? They might need a small little system. They need a prom system. They need a wedding system. They need an outdoor system. They need maybe a system for their bedroom, right? So so there's lots more opportunity and focus. And at, of course, at the same time, um, you know, with, with music going digital, it became accessible to a whole new audience and, and everything. There, there became a lot more DJs in the world to sell to also. So right. Um, right. we've really tried to focus on that, but, but um, wanted to kind of get into the the history of EV because we've been around for so long. Um, my slide here says ninety years, um, but it's actually ninety three years now. The company was founded in nineteen twenty seven, so uh, we're coming up on a hundred. So um, I've been with the company for sixteen years. If I can make it to that hundredth year anniversary, that that's my goal. We'll see how it goes after that, but I got to make it to that. That that's that's my goal. So a hundred years is is pretty incredible. And a wide variety of, of uh, photos that I have to show here. Um, you know, some of the more uh, interesting, noteworthy ones. The the one behind Stevie there. I don't know if you can um, go back. Uh, I think you clicked through those pictures there, Justin. But um, yeah, the one in the middle there. Uh, th that's Newt Rockney. So the the company was actually founded in South Bend, Indiana, um, where Newt Rockney. For those of you who are football fans. Um, may know Newt Rockney as the legendary uh, Notre Dame head football coach. Our founders uh, um, really created the first PA uh, known, and, and he called it his, his uh, electric voice. And that's actually where the name uh, Electro Voice kind of evolved, and, and he, he essentially named the company for us. So he was using that to shout at all the different practice fields, which is really interesting. Um, there's a picture of John Glenn. So he used a, a EV microphone as he orbited the moon, right? So these are iconic events. Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. Um, Stevie Wonder recorded Songs in the Key of Life, you know, one of the greatest albums of all time. I think we got a shot of him there using the RE20. Um, and then uh, I think uh, we've also got a, a little shot of uh, um, uh, ACDC's Black Ice Tour. So they were using uh, X-Ray speakers. So we've got a really rich tradition. And, and you know, what's cool is, is you're talking about iconic American events, you know, uh, things that are that are historic and, and we're really proud to, to, to have products that, that fit in. And, um, you know, hopefully, uh, there's someone out there listening that's, uh, using EV to create a new, uh, world event, uh, that we're about to find out about soon. So, yeah. Um, and, and, yeah. and I will say, and I will say just to, to kind of, to back on that, like I, I, you know, Steve is a, is a musician and I know he's a bit of a rocker and, and, uh, I'm very much into all different types of music, but the hard rock usually is what catches me. And I see guys still touring with uh, old ND7, uh, I'm sorry, ND9967s, nine, nine, whichever one was the metal mic where you could just scream into that thing and there's literally no feedback on it. So, I mean, the products from microphones to speakers are very well executed. They're very well built and manufactured. And the support for us has always been top notch. Yeah. And, you know, as we move into speakers, you, you did mention there is a speaker for every price point. So I know we start out at ZLX and I think there's always a misconception that value price means less qualities. And I will say that this line, since its inception, has been one of the most, you know, feature packed for the price point that still delivers quality performance night in, night out. Yeah. Yeah. ZLX really changed the game. Um, you know, it was the first loudspeaker to put signal processing in it. 
DSP where you could, you know, control the EQ settings digitally. There was presets. There's all sorts of really cool things in there. Um, but it also uh, was a breakthrough in this patent right here, um, which you'll find in a lot of Electra Voice uh, loudspeakers. In fact, all four of our families do have SST. And, and to your point there, um, Kevin, before I get into what SST is, um, you know, when you're equating price points, one, one thing Electra Voice always strives to do, and I think we do a very good job of doing it, regardless of what price point you're at, when you compare it to any other competitor of ours at a similar price point, we feel like we're always giving you a better value, a better sounding box, a louder box, more features, more durable, um, you know, all of those things that, that go with making it a better speaker, pound for pound and dollar for dollar, we think that we always... Uh, you know, we're never afraid of that Pepsi challenge. I know you guys have them set up in your showroom, right? And we're never afraid yep. of that demo. We'll, we'll do that all day, every day. Uh, we encourage people to do that as much as, as possible as always listen to it and throw the EV in the mix. And, and, you know, I, I you know, everybody does have their preferences, but, um, you know, I, I've really come to believe in the product and, and always think that it sounds better than, than any competitor for that price point. So ZLX, really changed the game uh, at an entry level price point, what we consider entry level. Of course, you can buy things cheaper, right? We're talking about the ZLX 12 BT at, at the entry price point for a powered 12 inch two way loudspeaker, right? Uh, at 399 uh, map price, right? Um, you know, I, I, I still don't think that that box can be beat. And it is, you know, as that, that slide says, the best selling pro audio speakers in the world. And they've remained that way since the minute they came out. Uh, and, and it's and it's very flexible on it because you have a Bluetooth streaming option as, you know, as well. So at that price point, that, that doesn't really exist. Yeah, exactly. We actually added that as a little update last year. We moved from the older version of ZLX to the Bluetooth version, kept the price point the same. So again, adding even more value. And believe it or not, you know, sometimes there's a perception that Bluetooth is just kind of a throwaway and it's starting to become, well, I just expect it to be in that speaker. The, I mean, the truth is it, it, it costs money to put that technology in the box. And, and so we did that anyway and uh, held the price point the same. So, you know, giving, giving people even more value uh, than it is. But, but ZLX uh, in and of itself is, is just a fantastic price point. Um, if we talk about SST for a minute and we go back to that, that's a EV patented design. And we, when we start talking about what Electro Voice does, right, we design and engineer, you know, every part of these loudspeakers. And that comes with some really smart guys that figure out some creative ways to do that. And what SST isn't so much. I just want to say those yeah. guys really are smart. I mean, aside oh. from them turning a light off in the anechoic chamber so I could not see, hear, or feel anything for like 30 seconds, <laughs> they're brilliant. Some of the things that I've seen them uh, come up with are just mind blowing. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, you know, it's, it's weird because you think that that speaker technology moves relatively slow. But when you look at what we get out of a speaker today versus something that was built 10, 20, 30 years ago, I mean, they've, they've made some amazing strides. You know, we're, we're really a company that's engineering driven, really focused on, on unique, creative problem solving. And, and it's not just done for the sake of building the greatest speaker. At the end of the day, what we want to do is build a speaker that improves the lives of our users, right? And that's what SST does so very well. Um, it's it's really not so much a technology, but more of a design uh, aspect that's patented. And what it basically means is if you see on that little asterisk there where it says port, okay, what we've done in a traditional box, both the, the, the front of the horn and the woofer are usually lined up right next to each other like this, right? But what we did is we actually brought that horn forward, okay? And so what that did is that created a little gap between the woofer and the horn. And so what does that mean? Okay, well, that means I can use that space now as a port for the box, first of all, right? Which means, of course, then I don't have to drill a hole in the box somewhere else to make a port which allows me to then actually shrink the overall size of the speaker, right? Because that I don't have to create more surface area just to put a hole in it for it to breathe, right? 
Right. So it right. solves that problem, first of all, in, in, in the overall dimension. Plus, not only that port there, but then we can actually overlap it and, and bring that horn down more, which brings the acoustic centers from the horn and the woofer closer together. Okay. So instead of it sounding like the highs are coming from here and the woofer, the lows are coming from here, it brings it out. So it sounds like a, almost more of like a coaxial box or a, a single source uh, where the sound from, from both drivers is coming closer together. Um, and that lives great. and that, and that lives in all families. That's, that's in, right. That's in all ELX. ELX. Yeah, nice. absolutely. Nice. And then the last thing it does, because we've pushed that forward, it actually physically time aligns the drivers. You see that dotted line going through the middle of the gray area where you normally wouldn't see inside the box is that usually those drivers are not in the same physical plane, right? Um, there's usually one recess. So what that does is it time aligns physically the drivers so that the sound from each of them is arriving at your ears at the same time. So um, now naturally there would be ways that you could solve that with signal processing or things in, in, in the box, in the electronics, but we always want to try to do solve those issues acoustically if we can, because then it just naturally lives there. Um, so that's a really important feature that Electro Voice has in all of their loudspeakers and, and uh, EV patented. So it, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's part of what makes all of the EV boxes sound so good. Awesome. And I know the ZLX, even though it's an entry level, it has some really great features that I think for mobile DJs, as well as any user, um, are, are key. So very lightweight. I, these things are less than 40 pounds, what, 38 pounds on the, is that, I don't know if that's 12 the 12 inch. or the 15. Yeah, that's the 12. Um, you know, wattage, I, I'm not a big fan of using wattage as the go-to number. The, you know, the SP on this is more than adequate for a, for a gig. Um, you know, we've sold a lot of these, not only as uh, front of house speakers, but also for monitors. Guys love using that 12 as a reliable monitor that can get just a little bit louder than an eight or a 10. Um, yeah, so then, yeah, absolutely. Having that 12 sounds really good and the 15 is great. You know, we we put three handles on it, which is kind of a unique design as well, making transport and setup uh, real easy. Um, you know, user presets so we can we can we can store and recall settings. And, uh, you know, there's all kinds of really great stuff in, in, in ZL, ZLX. And, and for that price point, it, it really can't be beat. Right. Right. And then after this, I know we have actually one of probably one of my more preferred series since you guys brought it out. Uh, and I would say for us, the the one of the big, uh, you know, building blocks for us in EV and really get hitting the dominate, let's say dominating the powered market was the original ELX. And now there's an ELX 200. You know, ELX made a great impact for us. And I actually have a, a 200 uh, 15 inch in white which I, I think is a great added feature to this series that probably a lot of people don't know about. But ELX 200 certainly builds from the original ELX, but I, but I like it a lot more for a lot of reasons. Yeah, I mean, I think Steve will, will talk us through ELX 200 um, uh, a little bit more detail. But what we really wanted to achieve there was add even more flexibility. The old ELX uh, series, um, you know, was great, um, but the, the tops were wood and the subs were wood. They were a little heavier. Um, we thought we had room to kind of do a hybrid where with the subs here in this family are wood, but the tops are actually a composite. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. But um, yeah, it's a really flexible family with a lot of models, especially when you include the white ones in there too. Now, speaking of models, now we're going to bring Steve in to talk about uh, the ELX 200. Hey, Steve. Good How one, guys. How's everybody doing? YouTube, uh, Facebook, IDJ fam. Thanks for joining in, tuning in, and listening to us uh, chat about speakers today. So, thanks, guys. Um, he does speak, everyone. He does speak. Kev, yeah. there's, an there's an important comment. I think I think we should bring up before we get to Steve, real quick. I think it's really important. Let's show it here on the screen. I have bought numerous different companies and landed with IDJ now, and highly respect Justin. If you're interested in new gear questions, yeah, I mean, Justin's the man. We know this. We said this right off the top. That's, I my, mean, if that's, I'm here, my, that's my guy right there. That's my right, guy. So Isaac, Isaac, What's up, I'm Mike? How are you, man? Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm going to hit some of these questions real quick. So Isaac asks, are there any new products? I'm going to touch on that later. Hang in there. Stay tuned. Uh, hey, Justin, finally, great to see you in person. Same way Gary, I did. Gary, 
Any any way I can get a donated sound system for a school? I'll give you my answer. <laughs> if you can talk to Mike, maybe Steve's got one laying around. Uh, thank you, Jose. So let's go into ELX 200. It's a very flexible and versatile box, but take it away. Let's hit some key points and tell people why they need to come and check these things out once we're open. Yeah, so uh, ELX 200, uh, you can think of it as a step up to the ZLX family. It does boast a little bit more power. We're sitting about a 130 uh, max SPL. Um, it does have the three handles. Uh, this is an actually an ELX 200 right next to me. It's very similar aesthetically to the ZLX. Um, what we did add to it um, exteriorly is we did add fly points. So we have three M10 fly points on the box. Um, we also, if you spin it around, have the ability to attach a wall mount bracket. So pretty cool features that aren't offered in the ZLX that you do get in the ELX 200. Um, like we said, we have a little bit deeper portfolio here. We offer a 10 inch box as well, in addition to a 12 and a 15. And then we have a 12 and an 18 inch uh, 15 millimeter subwoofer that goes along with that as well. And those subs could be used interchanged with the ZLX as well. So you could bring some of these ELX 200 products into the ZLX family to complement uh, your existing rig. Um, one big difference here was uh, the amount of DSP uh, that's inside of this box. It's more intelligent uh, than the ZLX box is. Um, and there's actually an app that you can get from the App Store if you have an iPhone or Google Play if you have an Android called the EV Quick Smart app. So if you got some free time, feel free to download that. Um, but what it does is allow us to control the DSP of the box via Bluetooth, not stream music, but control the DSP. So don't let that confuse you. Um, but you can access the three band EQ. You can access our four preset modes, music, speech, live club, depending upon your application. You can select where the box is, whether it's on a tripod like we have here, it's suspended, using it as a monitor, uh, et cetera. Um, and then you also have uh, some crossover abilities. Uh, I think we have 80, 100, 120, 150 Hertz, and then some presets for other uh, boxes in our family. ELX 200, we have EKX presets. We even have like Mike's got in the back there, a ZXA, but the ZXA sub presets so some of our older products as well. So the box really does step up in terms of how smart it is compared to ZLX. Um, we do offer these in white, uh, which is great for church applications, some weddings, maybe corporate AV. Um, and we also offer all these models in a passive version. So like we talked about with the wall mount bracket, we talked about with the M10 points, you could install this box in a lot of different environments. So, Steve, uh, right. yes. I don't want to cut you off, but you just mentioned the ELX 200 in white. White. And it's my job to make sure that everyone is aware that we are currently giving away in the month of May 2020. 2020 of 2020, May 2020, a pair of ELX 200s in white, believe it or not, okay? For free, all you have to do is log in from our Instagram page. And what I wanna do now is just kind of bring that on here to show everybody. All you gotta do is go to our Instagram page very easily, and you'll see here the winner free ELX 12P white speakers. You click on that, and that's gonna give you the instructions on how to enter, so it's free. You don't have to purchase anything. Someone will win. We've given away many things in the past, and we wanted to thank Electro Voice for offering this awesome, awesome prize to our audience and to our customers. Uh, and really, we do respect and, and trust you guys as a partner with us. So thank you for this. So I just wanted to bring this up and remind everybody about this awesome giveaway. So, Steve, going back to the app, not, not that I'm going to jump around, I know yeah. one of my favorite functions on it is the DJ warning alert for when somebody is completely pulling a DJ move and overdriving. Because you know how DJs are not sound guys by any stretch of the imagination. And a lot of guys like the red line. So let, let's just be clear. It's going to say when your speakers are clipping. But but why don't we explain to people the difference between uh, just clipping and, and overloading, limiting, and, and what kind of protection circuitry is in there? Mike, you want to feel that? Yeah, I mean, one of the, one of the cool things is... Uh, you know, that we're doing here is actually monitoring the input level, 
um, on, on, on ELX 200. So, um, you know, unfortunately, you know, and I, I don't necessarily blame DJs either. Um, a lot of times it's, it's the equipment, right? Um, uh, you know, DJ mixers in particular have an incredibly hot output really really excessive sometimes um and if you don't control that then then what you end up doing sometimes is is actually sending a signal to your speakers that's just frankly way too hot um and distorted uh as it's coming in um so what we want to do is is we want to monitor that level and if it sees a voltage that's unsafe um, or distorted or, or anything that, that really shouldn't be happening. Um, you know, one of the cool things about this app is what it does is it not only tells you on the back of the speaker, Hey, you know, uh, I'm, I'm clipping, you know, uh, settle down there, <laughs> but it also will actually trigger if you've got it connected to the app, it'll also trigger your phone to vibrate. And this little warning screen shows up and says, you know, Hey, Bad things are happening over here. And why is that important? Well, I know for most DJs, as a, as a former DJ myself, right, once you're in the middle of the gig, you might do a sound check, right, and, and everything's fine. But in the middle of the gig, right, you've got a, a library of music and everything's recorded at different levels. The newer music today is compressed beyond belief, right? And that's very different from maybe a track you'd play from the 80s or the 70s or something like that. So uh, yeah. you may think you're good and have sound checked with something from the 80s, but by the time you get to current music, you're just nailing it. But you're in the middle of your event and your dance floor is packed and you got a million things going on. You got people asking for requests and setting their drinks on your subwoofers and whatever else they're doing to make you crazy, right? You're just trying to get through your show. You're not necessarily running back and babysitting, hey, what's going on with my speaker every five seconds? So what this will do is if there's an issue, it'll actually vibrate your your, your mobile device and, and it'll give you that warning right there. So um that's a great tool you just got your phone in your pocket starts vibrating you check it you go oh okay maybe i need to turn down a little bit so a really cool feature and, and we're, we're proud of that and it's a, it's an important uh thing that often gets overlooked but i think it's it's one of those small little attention to details when we think about how a user is using it and the difference between um you know what ev does versus maybe another company would just assume that well you, you you should have someone babysitting you have a sound guy you have someone paying attention to this that's not true once you're using them you're up and going and, and you're in your show zone you know you're not in sound guy zone at that point so um i think it's a really cool feature we're excited we we have that in yeah. there evie's got your a, back evie's got and, your and back good, yeah. because you, you you can move your speakers a little further away and you don't have to keep you know ducking back to look at the back of them and, and i want to just touch on a very key thing that you said is that it detects the incoming line voltage because a lot of people, again, think that, it, oh, it's got higher wattage rating, so I could just go louder. It's all based on what's coming into the source, yeah. not, you know, not what the box cabinet itself is capable of. So if you're yeah, redlining. You're talking about clipping, yeah, that, that's what's, what's happening on your input. And, and 12 o'clock on one mixer and 12 o'clock on another mixer it, it can be very different things. So, Right. And and Steve, I just want to go back real quick. These are in passive and powered. You have a 12, a 15, a 10 inch 10. top, and then you've got a 12 and 18 inch sub. Absolutely. And one thing I, I, I left out, but I feel like I should mention in that app, uh, we have the ability to group up to six of these speakers together. So you could have, for instance, uh, two 15s, and two 18 inch subs and then have maybe two tens as monitors and have separate groups designated for your mains and then your monitors to be able to EQ them separately and have them listed separately within the app. I think that's a really nice feature to point out. Nice. And I do also, I, I want to point out, actually, that's the next speaker. I'm, I'm, I'm jumping. No, I'm, it is on the ELX 200. This also has an RCA input on the back of it, which yes, it uh, it's one I of the- love it, RCA. It's, it's a lot of people ask for this feature still. So, you know, it's got, I know the combo XLR uh, TRS jack, and it's got an RCA input on the back as well. Kev, that leads me to a question, and I'm glad you brought that up. So, obviously, with ZLX, if you have the old model, you want to buy the new model, it's easy because it has Bluetooth, right? Now, I personally have the original set of ELX 15 and 12Ps, right? Um, 
so for someone like myself, why do I need to go? And they still work, by the way, sound great, of course. Uh, bought them in the late 2000s. Um, but why do I need to go out and buy ELX 200? Because that's what our audience wants to know. And um, what what is that reason? What makes the new series better, in your opinion? And you know, just the elevator pitch. That goes out to Mike or Steve. Yeah, from my perspective, I would say, you know, uh, the upgrade is in flexibility, right? You've got sig digital signal processing built in. The original series didn't. There was a couple of uh, dip switches and EQ switches on the back of it, just analog, very simple filters. Um, you've got a lot more control over being able to tailor your sound, number one. Number two, the aesthetics are updated. Um, the, the top boxes are lighter weight. The subs are more compact. Um, in fact, the 18 inch sub, uh, the powered 18 inch sub is 62 pounds, which is the lightest powered 18 inch subwoofer on the market. Uh, that's a hidden gem that ELX 200 sub. It, it really is. is. It, it bangs. It's a hidden gem. Yeah. For the size and weight of that thing, it is absolutely unbelievable. So it's, it's, it's the feature set as, as well as the aesthetics and, and the ergonomics of it. Um, we did add a little more power. It'll get a little bit louder as well. So, um, you know, there, there is an upgrade there. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, you've got the suspension points that Steve mentioned that the new one has that the old one didn't, but, uh, yeah, there's, there's, uh, You've got white. You've got you've got so much stuff. It, there's a lot more flexibility in the new one uh, versus the old. Absolutely. And so, then next, okay, go ahead, Justin. You go. Let's go to the EKX, right? EKX, more power, bigger, more. I mean, these things. I remember we heard these at Nam, yeah. and I, I was just blown away by the low end response out of these compared to the other cabinets and just how accurate they were. And, and this is a uh, a monster line without going all the way to the top. Yeah, uh, EKX is, uh, in in my mind, you know, if I, if I were going to, to start out or if I'm going to buy a PA that will cover most of my events for a really long time, that's where I start to look at EKX, right? Because now we start getting to an output level that really, really puts your hair back. I mean, it's not like ZLX or EKX won't get loud, but EKX is that next level where you go, oh, okay, N now we're into some serious PA here. Um, and it's really built uh, to be that way. You know, all of the boxes, again, now we start talking about wooden cabinets from this point in the EV line higher uh, with EKX and ETX. Um, but EKX is a 15 millimeter Baltic birch cabinet, has some very pro features like being able to save user presets and things like that. Um, really not terribly revolutionary in a lot of the, the DSP, right? Uh, is gonna be similar to what you would see in, in uh, ELX 200 uh, or even ZLX. So it's kind of in pa on par with those guys when it, when it comes to the amount of control you have. Um, but the, the next thing that we did with EKX that really starts to set it apart would, would really be that, that SPL. It's getting much louder. So um, one thing we kind of set out to do is, is make sure that when you're a being those with with maybe our our favorite three letter competitors out there um, that 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 EV is setting itself apart for that price point right when we're talking about the powered twelve inch two way at seven ninety nine that's a very crowded price point there's a lot of competition there um, so we wanted to make sure we 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 built a box that really stood out above the crowd there and and I think that's what we did um, that's My not. I have a quick question. Yeah. Are you saying that the less number of letters a speaker brand has, <laughs> the better it is? It's not it's not what? Well, yeah. So we take off a letter and we put that in extra sound pressure level. Sound pressure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Don't about turn that. it into it's watts, we turn it into sound pressure. No. Watts. You know what? The truth is they're they're really and I don't mean to 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 try to you know, talk down about any of our competitors because at the end of the day, you know, they all have unique uh, propositions, right? Um, but when you think about that EV sound and when you really go, as I mentioned before, you go take the time and listen, right? 
that's where I think you'll you'll hear the difference. And and uh, you know, I, 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 saying that cliche of we'll take the Pepsi challenge. I mean, we really will. Um, you know, through countless DJ exhibits at at Mobile Beat or DJ Expo or you know. Every chance I get, I love the opportunity to put these things next to a competitor and and just go, look, you choose, you listen. What tracks do you want to play? Plug in your phone. Do your thing, man. I'm out of this. Here it is. And you guys do that every day in your showroom, so you know better than I do, but it's it's my favorite thing in the world. I speak from experience with my, my man Dan and I standing in the EV booth in Atlantic City cranking like a G6 for hours, uh, hours. So I just yeah. couldn't take the song anymore and yeah. just outselling all the other brands. The playlist now. But, <laughs> uh, that song will never be removed from the playlist. There's no, right. there's no reason to remove it. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's just, it, we've, we've had a lot of success with this cabinet. Um, it is more of a pro box. I do have a quick question before we move to the next slide, because there is a, an important feature on the subs that I want to talk about. But actually, Donald had a good uh, suggestion, and that was actually going to be one of my questions. Um, need to start putting power con through connectors on the self-powered speakers. Mm -hmm. I kind of consider this more of a pro box, and I, I'm pretty sure you know the, the the explanation is probably probably simple. It's easy to get an IEC cord anywhere. But is yeah. there any reason why there is no power cons on these cabinets, or is that really it? Yeah, I mean that that is a great question, Donald. Um, and and yes, that is something that we consider with every speaker line. Um, at the end of the day, PowerCon is number one, very expensive. Um, so uh, while there are users like yourself that would appreciate that feature, I personally would as well. You have to weigh that against the balance of that added cost, right? And by the time you add that cost into the box, if that ends up increasing the cost uh, to the consumer, are we really doing everybody a, the service that they want? And while there are some uh, out there that, that want that, um, I get that. Um, uh, you know, we, we, it's something that we, we really do listen to a lot of user feedback. Unfortunately, it's one of those things where majority rules. So you've got the expense of it, but you also do have, as, as Kevin mentioned, the, the issue of PowerCon being a little bit more esoteric. And if your power cable goes down or is cut or damaged in some way, you know, you can go anywhere and get an IEC cable, literally yep. anywhere. You're, whatever venue you're in probably has a dozen of them in a drawer somewhere in the office, right? Um, so a power con cable, that goes down and you've got problems. So, you know, it, it's actually a, a bunch of feedback that we get from the users, but, but even many rental companies have said, you know, while they would prefer that feature, they go, oh, well, let's look at that from a practicality standpoint. And, and when something goes down, the show must go on. That That's that's job number one. Right. So so we do weigh that um, we've looked into other options and we'll con continue to look into other options. You know, I'm I'm. I don't know if it's even viable, but I, you know, we're working on some stuff now and I've been pressing our product managers to go, Hey, could, why couldn't we do like a pass through IEC? Is that possible? Um, and then of course, you know, the good thing about PowerCon is it locks uh, in place, but now there's additional problems with that, right? Um, a locking connector pose can pose a trip hazard. You know, if you trip over that cord now, that whole box comes down, um, yep. which can be a liability. Where an IEC, you trip on that cord, it'll pop out, and the box doesn't come down. So, hopefully, all these these things. And, yeah. and believe me, um, we we continue to debate that. But um, you know, one thing that we do make sure we do is is when we go set out to build a new product, we're always doing extensive user focus groups um, with DJs, musicians, rental companies. To you know. Everybody across the board, our, our friends IDJ now, help help all the time give us input on on what the right thing to do is. Um, right. We have to look at the the broader scope, and and sometimes we have the luxury of focusing in and go, okay, I want to build a product that's exactly for this one market, um, and that's where right. we can get a little more focused on that. But it's always a balance. But but great question. Now, before we jump on to the cardioid mode, because Justin uh, jumped ahead, I just want to say two things. So, Brittany, we, we are going to hit your uh, your question in a little bit. So I know you can't stay right now, but yeah, we certainly will cover that back. when we get to the, the evolves. Um, it's just we're going to get into that later. And 
the short answer, they're entirely different animals and the evolves have subwoofers attached, so it's gonna be a different sound. That's my quick answer. Um, but we'll cover that more a little bit later. Scott would Atlanta like to sure. Scott would like to see a portable self-powered speaker with a two-inch compression driver, uh, comparable to a three-letter brand. Uh, <laughs> starts with R, ends with CF. But I'll just say, stay tuned for ETX because it's because it exists. Um, but when we get back to EKX, the subwoofer, the it's the 18 and the 15, right? They they're both capable of cardioid mode. Yeah, one thing we did with EKX, this was our first family to have it, um, did a really cool thing with uh, cardioid subwoofers. Um, so, you know, people think, uh, generally speaking, what is cardioid? Um, and really the way to think about that is, is typically uh, in, within microphones, right? A cardioid microphone will have a pickup pattern that's shaped similarly to that, that heart shape you see in the middle of the screen, which is where the cardio portion of the cardioid comes from, right? Um, so what you're doing is typically with a microphone, it, it has a pickup pattern that's shaped like that. So if you're within that range, it'll pick up sounds and reject range to the, to the, to behind it. Um, thinking of that oppositely, um, what we wanted to do is, is, is basically make a way that you could steer subwoofer sound, right? The, the low frequencies. Um, it's not a new concept by any means. Concert touring productions have been using uh, similar technology um, with much more advanced DSP um, uh, for, for years, but EKX was really the first one to, to bring it in and say, look, we, we want this, this feature in the hands of the everyday DJ and musician, right? We want them to be able to do this. And, and, and why do we want to do that? Well, imagine if you're doing an outdoor event, right? Uh, a wedding and it's outside and you're cranking and it's 1130 at night and you're, you're, you're pumping the latest track right and there's a tunnel low end and it's annoying the neighbors way back this way and they call the cops on you what if you had the ability to steer that low end to where the party was what if there was nothing right, right. coming back and everything all the focus was out this way that's what cardioid subs do is it it focuses that energy where it needs to be one of the basic principles of sound is point the loud part at the people, right? Um, and we won't have the ability to do that now with low end. So it's not just outside. It could be anything. You know, if you're a DJ that uses turntables, right, you want to eliminate that feedback loop through your needles, right? Yep. Yep. Great problem solver there. Get all that low end going that way instead of washing back behind you and crushing your skull all night, right? Or if you're, you know, in a big hotel uh, with multiple events going on and you're in the ballroom next to someone else and, and you're hammering loud and maybe they're in the middle of their speeches, you know, maybe you could turn it down, but then that kind of screws with your party. So what a great solution to be able to focus that energy into your room and keep it away from them, right? So there's there's countless options and reasons to do it. Um, it's important to note that you do need at least two subwoofers in order right, to make right. that work. Um, and basically all you do is invert one of them, turn one of them around, and then you recall the cardioid setting on the one that you turn around and boom, it's like magic. It's really cool. It could be crushing loud out front and you walk behind it and you go, wow, is this thing even on? It, it'll freak you out when you hear it, really. It's funny. Yeah, I mean, you, you, go ahead, go Justin. Ahead. I was just going to say, it's funny. it's funny. People, People have, have gear that does stuff that they don't even know it does a lot of times. Just as you were saying, they may have these sub, not even realize that it does it. So it's awesome that we're doing this talking about the gear that they may already have and people may be picking up something new that they can use when events get going again uh, in the future. And it's just good stuff. So uh, yeah. you always learn something new and I and, uh, just want to point that out. Yeah. And you know, again, want, this is a problem. Want to say, when, Go ahead, when, you've got the, when you've got the two subs stacked, you're, you're also saving some floor space instead of putting, let's say a sub on each side and then trying to make everything look pretty. Cause you could just do this with two subs. If you have three subs, set it up like a stage platform, put a, a piece of, you know, fabric over it to cover it, no one's going to see it, but it, it's going to, it's also going to help uh, reduce microphone feedback because all that low end frequency isn't coming back in your face. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is a problem solver and one that 
Um, you know, admittedly, we, we haven't done a good enough job of talking about it. Um, but, you know, it, it's a solution to a problem that I think a lot of guys out there d don't even realize that there's a way to solve it, you know? Right. Um, well, but here, here we are. And, We're talking about and it. E and, and EKX as a whole, you know, like we said, this is, I, I really consider this a pro level box. And when you step up from ZLX up to EKX, you, you know, you're at 134 dB now versus 127. You know, again, 1500 watts. I'm not, I don't hang on that number, but we know. And then again, the the 15 millimeter Baltic birch. It's it's plywood. It's it's not a, a you know composite or, or a laminate um, or ejection molded or however you want to do it. You know, you've got the DSP. You've got the tough coat on there. So it is a really rugged, durable, and and feature packed box for for the price point. It's 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 pretty incredible. Yeah. And again, I would just encourage anyone when you're in that price point play it next to the competitors and go, Hey, does it sound good? And, and, you know, make your choice from there. When we get, and then from, when ahead, we get ahead, Kev, I'm sorry to cut you guys off, but, and you can probably uh, relay the, and echo these sentiments, but when we get uh, a customer on the phone that is looking to step up from their, their entry level system, EKX is always a great place to put them into because it's a great price point and it will definitely not just be a lateral move. It's definitely going to be an increase. And as you said earlier, if I have someone coming into it and they're serious and they want to run a business with these speakers, which is an infrastructure of that business, I'll always say EKX or ETX. I really wouldn't go with something other than that because if you're looking to do this long term, you're just going to be back in six months buying something anyway. So EKX is a great kind of middle ground item where it's a great price point, but like you said earlier, it has pro level features and really impressive sound yeah absolutely yep. yeah and then we've got to me i mean i remember seeing this thing again at nam years ago and, and i believe it was mark storm grabbed me and he he showed me the first <laughs> and the most the most important feature is that the etx went all the way to 11 goes if you to don't get that spinal if you don't get that spinal tap reference you, you're just too young uh but yeah the etx Again, overbuilt, superior sound quality, feature packed. Huh. I mean, as you say on here, the fully loaded flagship. Yeah, ETX is is one of those that um, you know. That's what we set out to do. Now we we wanted to go. Okay, let let's let's make a box that that will really peel paint. That's got a lot of really really pro features, some innovative stuff that no one's ever done. Um, and I think we did a fantastic job of it. Um, you know, it's a fairly full family. You know, there's three two-way models in the line, uh, a 10, 12, and 15-inch two-way. There's a 15-inch three-way box. And then there's two different subwoofers, a 15 and 18-inch sub in the line. Um, the biggest sellers are the biggest boxes, actually, the three-way uh, and the 18-inch uh, sub. Because once you get to this level, it's like, well... All right, let's buy the biggest stuff and let's go. Yep. Um, because that's really what it does. But um, you know, ETX is really um kind of condensed a lot of our high-end uh concert sound product uh features and signal processing and put it into a box that's accessible um and 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 at a great price point for what you're getting one of the the things we we talk most about it is the level of protection that you get in etx um is absolutely unparalleled to anything in the market um we do uh the a whole suite of processing in ETX called FIR drive, which is uh, actually derived from our, um, again, our concert sound products. Um, and FIR drive not only has FIR filters uh, and phase alignments and things that make the box sound a lot better, but it has a, a, an algorithm in it that is actually very, very, powerful for protecting your investment in two different ways, um, both a peak and temp limiter here. Okay, so what it does is there's a temp limiter that, that you see here on the screen, and, and that's kind of what pops up there, is the, the temp, if you see that warning, what it's, what it's basically doing is it's monitoring that input voltage right from your mixer that could be way too hot and it's measuring that input voltage over time right so voltage plus time equals heat right, right. 
to a loudspeaker. So it knows exactly how long it can take whatever you're giving it and, and at what point it's going to say, okay, now you're giving me too much. This is too much. You got to do something with it. If you don't do anything with it, it'll protect itself. It'll give you that warning and, and, and it'll say, hey, uh -uh, I don't like this. And it'll protect itself. But the problem is, is, is you know, I see Randy's comment here uh, that they come on too early. Um, what I would ask Randy, though, is what defines too early? Right. Um, the truth is, is, is we've actually monitored these. And when you see those warning lights, people freak out. Right. But what those warning lights mean is, is the box is is doing its job. It means it's working. It's saying what you're doing to me, I don't like, but I'm going to go ahead and protect myself. And I'm going to tell you that I'm protecting myself. It, it, the box doesn't stop working, right? Um, so I would just say, Randy, don't be concerned with the lights. I mean, the lights are just telling you that the box is doing what it's supposed to do. That's what you paid for, right? I always, I always tell customers, Mike, congratulations, you're growing, man. And it looks like you're need, you need a better and more powerful cabinet because they shouldn't be doing that. You need a speaker that's capable of producing volumes that you're looking for in those types of rooms. You yeah, know, if that, you, that's what it comes down to. I mean, yeah, I mean the, the the SPL that these boxes reach is 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 pretty darn high. Yeah, uh, and on par with anything else at its price point. So if you're seeing those limiters and and wanting more out of it, one of two things can be happening. Number one, because ETX sounds so good and is so clean, right? Number one, humans perceive distortion as volume. Number yep. one. So a lot of times you'll hear a box that's not distorted in playing just as loud as something that's really distorted and the distorted speaker sounds louder because it hurts. Okay. So that's the one thing I would do is, is, is measure it next time you go, wow, this thing doesn't seem like enough to me. Measure it. Go ahead and do that. And you'll see how loud you really are. Yeah. Um, I mean, Rand, Randy, Randy wants to see a newer and more powerful version. I mean, this at 136 dB is, I mean, that's, that, that's loud. That's loud, that's, man. That's, that's, ir that's irresponsibly loud. I mean, I everybody that. wants louder. I mean, sure, I, I want newer and more powerful too. But I sure. guess my point is e e ETX is really, really loud and on point. Um, I'll, I'll only say one other thing, and I won't be specific, but when you look at when we were developing ETX, right, one of the biggest things that you first see limit is the subwoofers. Subwoofers will 90% of the time go into limit before your tops will. That's the nature of producing low end frequencies that are, you know, pretty nasty. So we did a lot of testing uh, with the uh, ETX 18 uh, sub. He agrees. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we did a lot of testing with the ETX uh, 18 sub and we did it next to a a one for one comparison price point of one of our three letter competitors, 18 inch powered subwoofer. Um, I love that. Oh, I love that. QVC. All <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, HSN. All I will say is that the competitor subwoofer's limit indication did not come on until you drove that box 13 decibels into distortion. Yeah. Okay. We are very honest with our ratings, and while perception is, wow, look how loud that thing gets, man. It's, it's way louder than that EV one. Yep, but it's also distorted way beyond it should be. So we're trying to do our customer – we're trying to do right by our customer in, in being honest with you're, when those indicators come on. Mike, you're doing and, a great job. You're, you're winning Randy over. Yeah, and and I and I I I I hate it because I can't overcome that perception frequently enough because I hear it all the time. But the truth is, the box is doing exactly what it needs to be doing. It's telling you exactly what it it should be doing. And frankly, the competitors that you may look at that aren't doing that are lying. And hey. and so so hey Mike, just just a couple things real quick before we go on. So Michael Oliver said. Uh, curious as why the subs have lower power than top. So Michael, you're looking at wattage. Uh, the subs, I think, are 1,800 watts, and the tops, the 15, What's up, is Mike? 2,000 watts. But that's not power. The SPL is power. 
they're actually the same. They're both 135 dB SPL peak. Um, so that's that's going to be your volume. So they, they are the same loudness, uh, but depending on how you're going to cross them over, how you're going to use them, it, it's really going to, and, and make sure that you're not redlining them, is what's going to going to show it off. And uh, I do have a question, Mike, on the compression driver on the ETX. Mm -hmm. This is a two-inch compression driver, correct? Uh, no, we do not. No, it's close, right? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, My mistake. I'd have to look it up. Um, and, and and leave the technical stuff to me, all right? And I know you we got saw it, that. Yeah, I know we got asked that question. I guess I would, again, throw that oh, out. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1.25. My mistake. It's okay. 1.25. Um, I would only counter that question with a question. Why? Why do you need two inch? Why why not three inch? Why what 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 in and of itself, what problem are you trying to solve with a two inch driver? Yes, yeah, Scott, I'm actually on the spec sheet right now. It's a 1.25 inch high frequency titanium compression driver in the ETX. Yeah. It, um, if 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 it sounds good, I would just say what does it matter? Um, you yeah, know. I mean the, the the best thing I could say is because we do have that other other speaker here in the showroom. If you put the two side by side, you again, you can't hear the difference between a 1.25 and a two inch. If you go from 1.25 to four inch, yes, completely, you know, night and day. But when you actually listen to, um, you know, what's going on here, it's 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 pretty impressive. Hey, yeah. ge gentlemen. So keep in mind, because I'm the national sales manager. I do a lot of this over the phone. And I'm talking to people that are in areas where a another retailer where they may be able to go and listen to these products maybe two hours away from them to drive. So yep. it's not conducive for them to go in here and listen to a new speaker. So the only thing a lot of time that they have to go off of are these specs and they can't necessarily right. use their ears to tell that story which you and i totally understand but it's very difficult to do that when i'm over the phone with these customers and it's also difficult for us to convey it but i can just say you know without necessarily going any deeper into the the specs per se is that for me i i personally own electro voice i've always loved the brand and um whatever they have at any respective price point is always going to be as good, if not better, than anything else that we're going to carry, respectively. Um, and you know, sound is everything. Specs are not always everything. And you know, the right. way that you know, without going too deeper into it, that's really what I think it comes down to. And just from the audience's understanding and their perspective, I get it because they don't always have the opportunity to go and hear these. They don't have an IDJ now uh around the corner where they can go and listen you know there's not a lot of stories and, like us that are out there so and, and you know what look look i'm gonna i'm gonna say this as as the realist here if you love that cabinet if that cabinet is the you know the cabinet for you because look the reality is my ears are different than justin's ears are different than steve's that are different than mike's and different than scott's you it's know fair. i happen to i really appreciate that the the sound that comes out of that brand and the high frequency so you know that may be in the, the box for you and over the etx ekx zlx ekx yeah i can't even do it anymore <laughs> um, but you know hey man look you know it, everybody has a different solution uh for something else and, and i'm sure you know again these guys are listening to the end user and, and if there's a you know if Absolutely. there's a, a practical application for a two inch or larger compression driver then, then I'm sure we'll see one. But I mean, if you hear, if you actually listen to these things, do an A, A B side by side, which I have done, take them out on gigs. You know, unless you're doing an A B comparison, you're really not going to hear it. Um, both are very clean, crystal clear, incredible presence in the high mid range, incredible vocal clarity, and and both are well built. You know, I'm, I'm not going to knock that brand. That's that's one of my favorite uh, three letter speaker companies. Yeah, there there can be some benefits to it, but the, the truth is, you know, we're not selling a driver by itself. We're selling a complete loudspeaker system, and that's made up of an amplifier, signal processing, a woofer, a high frequency driver, the construction of the cabinet. All of these things come into play with how a box sounds. Not love it, Scott. I love the request. I love it. I'm not knocking it. Trust me. <laughs> so all of those things coming together is what makes a box sound like it does. So I would take it as its whole and not necessarily get into the nitty gritty of 
you know, uh, well, did you use an imperial or a metric screw to, to put through the handle? I mean, um, it, the, the difference is negligible depending on, you know, what the end result is, is what you want to focus on. So, um, but, right. but great question. Um, I thought, I thought it's great. I, getting back into the protection that ETX has, right? We talked about the temperature uh, monitoring, the temp limiter, right? And that's monitoring voltage over time and saying, okay, I'm getting this hot. You need to do something about it. But it's also monitoring the incoming signal for peaks. Let's say feedback happens or someone drops a microphone, you get that big boom. Over excursion of a woofer uh, can can push it out of joint and and really screw it up really fast. So that peak anticipation limiter is actually looking at the incoming signal. And if something really damaging is coming along, it reduces it to a safe level and allows that signal to pass. So you're still making noise, but it's making sure that you're not going to uh, have over excursion of your woofer or blow something up uh, because of that. So another part of what ETX does is that protection. So really, really advanced stuff that that's built in and, and it's just there and it's just working all the time. Um, so a, another really cool thing that ETX does, uh, a, a couple more things I want to point out before we move on, uh, would be uh, it has a built in uh, it's not a fully parametric EQ, but it is, a, I'd say, a quasi-parametric EQ. Um, a typical loudspeaker has the ability, um, if you look uh, on the next slide there, um, uh, a typical loudspeaker will, will have a, an adjustment for highs, mids, and lows or something to that effect. Simple three-band wide EQ, right? What we've done is gotten very precise with that and given you the ability to uh, boost or cut uh, those frequencies very specifically. Rather than lows, I can choose if I'm boosting 80 hertz or 85 hertz or 90 hertz. I've got a lot more flexibility there uh, with how I want to do that. And conversely, if I want to cut, say there's an offending frequency, I've got it uh, on stage as a monitor and it's really feeding back at this one frequency and it's annoying me and I don't want to deal with it on the board or I've got a simple setup and I'm just going to fix it myself. I can do that right in the box and I can cut out, you know, 2K by 3 dB or 6 dB, whatever I want to do right there in the loudspeaker. So I can really fine tune how this box sounds and make sure that it's exactly what I want. So another right. cool feature there. Um, the last feature I'll really get into with ETX, uh, although there's lots more to talk about, um, another really innovative thing that we did was add delay into the box, okay? Um, so where this comes in handy is if you're using it as a fill speaker uh, or a front of house, I can control the delay of this uh, entire PA um, up to, uh, yeah, over 1,100 feet, right? So um, what I'm doing is, is basically delaying the sound one way or the other um, and making sure that it's time aligned with the stage, the drummer on the stage, or uh, if I've got them as fill speakers and 100 feet back in the room, it's very simple to on the back of the speaker, I just dial it in, it's 100 feet away from my PA, boom. Now your sound is perfectly time aligned, so you're not getting that slap effect where you're hearing things twice, right? It blends perfectly, it delays it so that the sound that you're hearing from every speaker is arriving at your audience's ears simultaneously and is perfectly blended. Um, so um, that can be a bit more of a, a, a difficult feature to, to understand, but um, you know, something that, uh, you know, if you've had those instances where you've got a really large setup or setting up a, along large distances, um, that's a feature that comes in really, really handy to have just right in the speaker. Awesome. I, I, ETX is definitely the flagship, you know, as, as you guys call it, the fully loaded flagship. This is as pro of pro box as you guys carry in the in the portable uh, powered speaker categories. And, and this thing is, it, it's, a, it's a total powerhouse. I, I love these things. And now we get to go into really, I think one of the most unique segments of, of pro audio. Uh, that is ever evolving. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Whoa. I feel, it's like, That's it's something like I should have said. Like, it's like I've hosted this. So another a couple of quick questions came in. Scott, I love the request, man. Keep keep them coming. I'm just, you know. Scott, it, it we just, love you, brother. Wanna, we love you. Yeah, it's all we love. I want to hear from um, you. Though. Michael has a million questions tonight. He wants to know if you've considered a line array top for the ETX series to match up with the rest of the lineup. 
He also has some shipping damage on one of his subs. Can he purchase the coating that he used to fix the damage spots? And then uh, you w- Randy wishes he could have an EV rep with you while you're at a gig. I mean, I could give you Steve's number. He can come meet you, and and he will he will rep at the gig. He'll roadie too. Steve, bro. Got to give I got you thirty dollars. Are you awake down um, there, Steve? Oh, I'm here. And then. And, and then there's another uh, question, which is kind of a, a vague question, but uh, how big of a party uh, can you do with the speakers? I mean, the, that's going to be application specific, and that's not not something I can really go totally into detail with here. But let's move on to <laughs> evolve. And Scott already hit one of my one of my big questions. And Michael, we'll come back to the the line array questions after we get this because I've got some <laughs> fake products I'm going to throw at you guys and pretend that are coming down the pipeline. And Mike's going to deny them all, but they're all coming. Trust um, me. Before Steve talks about Evolve, I just want to take claim and just make it clear that as the marketing manager, I had nothing to do with the naming of all the products we've talked about so far. <laughs> okay, ZL. I, I know you're tripping over ZLX, ELX, ETX, EK. I screw them up all the time well i screwed it up because it's actually zlx it's not, not even Z. my fault <laughs> yeah right if you're going the german wrong, route. wrong country yeah exactly i had nothing to do with that but evolve now, now yes. kevin have you ever or justin have you guys ever like sat down and, and contemplated what evolve is backwards that's right wow yeah ev love Hell yeah. How cool is that? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hey, hold on. Hold on. Uh, I'm going to pass out. You just blew my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, give me a minute. Give me a minute. <laughs> give me a minute, please. Let that sink in. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Not an accident. Wow. <laughs> Whew. That's a so, deep one. Ooh, all right, Mike. I have to believe you have something to do with that. Is that true? I can't take credit. Um, <laughs> we, we actually ended up hiring an agency to help us with naming of that. Product. Oh. That was one of their ideas. And as we talked through it, one of their creative guys went, wait a second. That says, if you, and then he said it and we went done. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Wow. I learned something new. Yeah. Very so, cool. So, We've got uh, currently yeah. currently two items uh, or two products in this category, which are the Evolve 50 and the Evolve 30M. I know the biggest difference is that the 30M has a mixer. And of course, the first question is, is there going to be an Evolve 50 with a mixer? And then would there ever be a removable mixer for the line array? So I, I think the app kind of handles that, but I'll let you go into the design, what it is, and I'll... I'll hold mine that actually hit me on the back of the head before as you go over some of the features. So, Yeah, so uh, uh, the Evolve, uh, a great product since its inception. It's one of my favorite products in our portfolio right now. Uh, the 50 is really the flagship of that uh, family that we have started there. Um, the 50 offers uh, eight three-and-a-half-inch neodymium high-frequency drivers along with the 12-inch subwoofer. Um, the 12 inch subwoofer is a 15 millimeter, uh, wood box as well. And a really cool feature of it is there's no cabling required. So the pole that you see in this image right here, it's just two clicks and the entire unit is put together. So setup time is insanely minimal. All of the cabling is done internally inside of that pole. So once you turn it on, Slide the pull in, slide the top on, you're ready to pass audio. That's it. No XLR cables, nothing. So that's for setup time, it's extremely easy. Oh, um, and the top, the top is the, the top. If you saw me throw it around, it's incredibly lightweight. I mean, there's really oh, nothing to it. Yeah. I mean, the 30 is so light. I, now I got the 30 behind me. It's like, it's like a Tom Brady deflated football. This thing is so light. You know, I can hold it with my pinky, you know. Um, but, uh, the 50, yes, flagship. So <laughs> we've got, uh, I think it, it's 127 dB, I think, is on the 50. I think that's what it comes in, Max SPL. Um, we do have two XLR uh, uh, line inputs on the back, as well as a third and fourth channel um, that has RCA, and then it actually has Bluetooth. So this box is Bluetooth streaming. I can just hook up my phone and boom, pass audio, and not all Bluetooth is created equal, so we do use the best uh, Bluetooth circuit on the market um, to give you the most longevity and the best fidelity uh, uh, of audio possible. 
Um, and that's on the that's on the Evolve 50, correct? That's on the Evolve 50. The Evolve 50 also, like we talked about with the ELX 200, the Quick Smart app can be used with this as well. So you can make it a part of a group. You can access a lot of the DSP within that as well, the presets, etc. So that can be brought in that with the ELX 200 family. Um, right, and and, I, and obviously, I think the the biggest benefit of the Evolve 50 is the coverage pattern. You know, it's, right. it's got a very, very wide coverage pattern. So if you're in a room where you're only using one, let's say as a ceremony speaker or for a cocktail hour, you can kind of plant it in the middle of the room and it's got what, 120 degrees, uh, you know, uh, horizontal coverage. Yeah, 120 horizontal. You think about a normal speaker like the ELX, that's 90 by 60. That's your typical, you know, point source box. We do have 120 horizontal here. And then the, the vertical coverage is actually asymmetrical. Uh, so, um, you're, you're coming off the box in this type of fashion, and that's a 40-degree asymmetrical coverage. So you're not throwing any sound up, and you're directing it right at the audience in front of you. So it really right. optimizes so, so, coverage. Yeah, so, so Justin, if you, if, if you actually take a look at that, that next slide there um, is a pretty good indicator of that. Um, and I'll only point out uh, a little bit more specifically to what Steve's talking about. And the, the way that we are achieving that is you see where that 120 degrees is over on the right side of your screen there. It's actually, those are waveguides that are placed over each individual driver within the column, right? If you look at most of our competitors, they're not doing that. They don't have a waveguide. This is actually, this is a custom built uh, piece that's designed to control the the, the sound and, and properly, uh, have all of those drivers sum together the way they are supposed to. Uh, most of our competitors really just have them uh, one pointed to the right, one pointed to the left, one pointed to the right, one pointed to the left. So it's this uneven distribution, this zigzag pattern um, uh, that they're doing where, where we've got a unique, uh, a, again, a, a patented design here that, that we've, we've put in these things. Right, and, and to kind of jump back to Brittany's question that, that Justin put on the screen, you know, when you're comparing this to a, a point source box, obviously the coverage is going to be the biggest difference. But but again, you're now including a subwoofer. So when you're looking at 120 degrees coverage versus, let's say, a standard 90, it's significant as far as how wide you can go out. And then you're you're throwing in a, a, a you know a 12 inch sub that you're not have that you don't have in the standard you know box. Right. Yeah. And, and a big difference too with a, a lot of other competitor column speakers is. Uh, our sub can be independently controlled from the top. So when you change the volume, you're not working them simultaneously. You can you know, adjust the sub accordingly if you want to add or reduce the bass that's coming out of that unit, which is a pretty nice feature to have in there. Right. Um, and yeah, I, the applications, I mean, I know a lot of DJs, friends of mine that have used this, done weddings with it. Uh, it's used in a lot of rental houses. Again, corporate events because of its look. Um, it's very sleek. It's very. It doesn't take up a lot of space. Great for that. Um, I've used it in live bands. It's, it's available in. It's available, available in, white. in white. You know it. Oh. You know it. Aren't they pretty, so Steve? Good. So good. Yeah. You need a boost to see or something, brother? You <laughs> know, I, I think I can adjust this. <laughs> <laughs> so back. Uh, so are you, are you uh, sitting uh, Indian uh, style? Uh, Robert Barry Pope asked a question on there, and, and his has to do with mounting lights on it. So these are not round poles, so it's important to know that the electronic connection goes through it. I don't advise that you hang lights from these specific poles. Doesn't mean you can't do it, but I personally wouldn't. Yeah, it's a good question. Actually, we've seen in some Facebook groups um, the promotion of, uh, I don't know, there's some somebody on eBay that's made some third-party bracket that attaches to the top, and they're putting these gig bar from Chave on top of these things. The, the, the issue with that is they're just not designed to do that um, as cool as it can be. You know, at the end of the day, you're free to do whatever you want, but we actually had to rewrite our manual uh, when we realized people started doing that. We had to put some warnings in there against it. Nobody read, nobody reads those anyway, but thanks. I, well, I, you know, it's a, it's a cover your butt sort of thing and in, in, in an official capacity to say, you know, um, if you do that, okay, but, um, you know, it's at your own risk. Um, the trouble is, is there's an industry standard that, um, that loudspeakers must must pass uh, a 15 degree tip test 
right? It, if you if you push that speaker 15 degrees, it has to self-correct. Um, and so that's the standard we live by here. Because these are very tall systems and very skinny, um, we've achieved that. And the, you know, a lot of people ask, well, why don't I have a pole that extends too? That same reason. If we add weight or extend the height of this thing in any way, it changes that center of gravity and, and can become a tip hazard. So we don't do that, but we've extended it enough where um, I mean, it's it's well above your average crowd's head. Unless you're doing a wedding for NBA players, you're probably cool. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> and if you're ever like on a stage, don't forget there's a short pole available for two as an accessory. That's right. That's yeah, right. we can go shorter. We just can't go taller. So right. the one other thing I wanted to point out um, when it comes to aesthetics, um, and if you can go back to that, just that first title slide there, Steve. I, I mean, the tagline for Evolve 50 is sleek sounds stunning. And the reason why is it sounds so good, but it also looks really good. We put a lot of time and attention in detail into the design of this thing. You know, most of our competitors have a very simple box for a subwoofer and it's a round pole that's off the shelf and it's just a, a, a rectangular piece that, that sticks on top of it. It looks like I just jabbed a bunch of cardboard together. You know, we understood that these are being used at events that, um, you know, honestly, the goal for these systems a lot of times is aesthetic, right? Um, you know, you're doing weddings, you're doing corporate events, you're doing things where time and attention and detail as to how the event is presented makes a big difference, right? And to have, you know, some some big speakers doesn't always look right for for the right for these sort of applications. So we wanted to make sure we had something that would blend into the environment in which they're being used. But also when you did see it or look at it, it looked good. Right. So that's balancing and that's that's all kinds of, you know, design stuff that they do. Um, but everything from from you know, the beveled edges along the side of it and the pole, everything is, is, is really well thought out. The handle on the back, very ergonomic, easy to grab, easy to put together the handles on the side of the sub. Um, but when, it, you know, even if you look at the back of the system, Steve, I don't know if you can see the, I got, I got the sub there, I um, but the input panel and the, the LCD screen is angled to a point where the inputs are down below, right? Um, so you don't see the cords sticking up, but the the controls with the screen and the interface knob there that you would use to to make adjustments are angled up. So I can I can see it, and I don't have to bend way down on the ground to make those adjustments. But at the same time, all my cables are hidden. Um, so that sort of attention to detail that people you know our competitors don't do the other thing is with the handle there steve if you could turn it uh, 90 degrees what you look at is on the top of those sub is this this plate that gives the sub a little bit of shape but you know one of the biggest complaints we got when we're doing our research is, is guys are saying look i hate it when people put their beer on on my subs i hate it I spent all this money and these guys are putting their beard and it spills all over the place. It really pisses me off. I can't stop someone from putting their beer on your sub, but I can make a design that makes it look like I shouldn't. And that's what we did there. So uh, it not only adds to the aesthetic effect of the overall system, but it, it, you know, someone could still be stupid and set their drink on it, but it looks like they shouldn't. So we hope that's just a little bit of a deterrent. It's those little attention to details, things that you'll never see in a spec sheet, things that will never really go noticed until you point it out. It's those sort of things that that overall add to the user experience for these things. And, and, and we're really, really proud of that one. Yeah, I mean, the 50, has been, the, the 50 has been a great seller for us in both uh, black and white. It, it's hit a lot of different markets. It was very quickly adapted to by the mobile DJ market uh, out it, by us. Kevin, it changed, it changed the game, man. It changed the game. It really <laughs> it did. did. It, it, it's, it's one of those, the, one of the, one of the boxes in the uh, portable column system that really made a huge impact for us. And again, I, and I think it, people have to be realistic in how they use them. This is, this is not something you want to take into a 600 person party. Uh, but it's something for uh, a small to mid-sized event and venue that certainly can do the job. For couple, sure. Yeah, a couple of things just from uh, the uh, from a user perspective because I've used the system a lot, and then also just from uh, the perspective that I have, just from selling so many of these systems, is 
everything that you've already kind of echoed with with what you just said. But I've literally had customers tell me that having the white Evolve 50s got them a gig over somebody else because they had a very picky wedding planner that had very spe specific aesthetics yep. and they needed to have a certain look. And because he had the white, he was able to get the gig over somebody else who didn't have a white setup. And it, that look has changed, I think, a lot of the way that DJ setups are nowadays. And it's almost being requested now by the end user, by the brides, by people having parties, uh, uh, not just the column array look, but also the color white. Um, so that is really something I think that is exciting and important to know when you're talking about the portable column array and the Evolve 50 specifically. Uh, the other thing from my perspective was, as Steve mentioned earlier, this thing is just super easy to set up. Um, and most importantly, it fits in a small vehicle. You know, you can set this thing up. You can essentially do a gig of, a, you know, 150 to 250, 300 people, depending on the size of the room. And we'll talk about that, I'm sure. But it, it, with, you know, in the back of your car, having it set up and literally you're set up in a few minutes, it really takes that, that amount of time. So it's just, uh, it's incredible. It really is a great system. Yeah. And then, and then taking on the success of the, of the 50, you guys at NAM, and I reference NAM a lot because that's where we get a really quick, uh, you know, first look at these things. And I know we kind of spoke about this earlier, but the Evolve 30M, which is, it's the little brother, but it's really not the little brother. When you look at the features, the design, the Dynacord amplifier, which to me is a, is a very significant feature. And, yeah. you know, still 123 uh, decimal uh, SPL max is, is still pretty high for, for the, this kind of product. Yes, it, it may be smaller, but it is much smarter than the Evolve 50. And that's really the biggest, uh, that's really what's setting it apart. And that M, that's why we attach the M to it. And the M, like you, you, like you mentioned before, Kevin, stands for mixer. And I'm going to dive into a little bit of that and a little bit why this Evolve 30 M caters to also a different market in some respects as well. Um, so uh, I'm actually going to show... Uh, the first difference is this is two poles rather than one from the F50. And that's like Mike said before, there's a certain height we need to achieve and to do it with one pole. It just didn't make sense. It would have been this obnoxiously large thing that what kind of case were we going to put this in? So it, it doesn't make any logical sense. So it actually is just two poles. It's one extra click than the Evolve 50. So it's adding another second onto your setup time. Nothing crazy. Um, the driver set's a little bit smaller. We have six 2.8s instead of eight three and a halfs, and we have a 10 inch sub instead of a 12 inch sub. So a little bit smaller, a little bit more compact. Um, on the back, I'm gonna zoom in again on the back here. I hope you guys can see it relative. Uh, we have a lot more inputs on this version of the Evolve. Uh, we actually have six different inputs, and the first four we have here are dual uh, mic line inputs. And there was a slide that was up before it said 15 volt phantom power. So when you're using a condenser microphone, you need phantom power to power that microphone. So what we did in the Evolve 50 and the Evolve 30 is we actually have 15 volts of phantom power always running into these inputs. So if you plug a condenser microphone into it, it's going to power it and you will be okay. So whether it's a dynamic or condenser mic, Either way, it's going to work for you. A condenser mic you might want to use for uh, something that needs more detail or a, a softer spoken singer or someone who speaks a little softer. It just It's amplified. It picks up more detail in the voice. Additionally, um, right. on this fourth channel, we have a quarter-inch high Z input. And me as a musician, why would I want that? Well, every I'm sure every band you see live, that bass is going DI. And DI means they need a direct box to convert, direct a, right, to, to change that to a, 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 a microphone level signal, not a line level signal. So this negates the idea of you having to bring a direct box to the gig. I can plug my guitar, my bass straight into this, and I'm good to go. It's going to be at the level it needs to be. Uh, and then you've got five. that RCA again. That's right. So channel five and six. Okay. We've got the RCA and we've got two uh, left and right analog quarter inch or XLR inputs. And we have the Bluetooth again, so we can stream Bluetooth with this box as well. And that eats up channel five. I'm sorry, just channel five and six. Channel seven and eight is the Bluetooth input. So we have four mic lines. 
your two left and right analog inputs, and then a Bluetooth as well. Yep, and that's some of the uh, features. Yep, you got your four modes like we do in all the other boxes, music, live, speech, and club. That's pretty standard amongst all our families. Um, and then we also have a aux output. So if you're going to hook up a monitor uh, to it as well, you know, you might be a guitar player doing a, a bar gig, an acoustic uh, solo type of gig. I want to hook up an ELX 210 as my monitor. I could send that out here. And then we have a, uh, uh, a mix out. Sorry, the aux out for the ELX 200. Mix out would be to connect a secondary ELX or Evolve, I'm sorry, Evolve 30, and we could run them in stereo. Um, so we can connect two units together and run them in stereo, and that Bluetooth will come out in stereo. Yeah, these, uh, these things are awesome. I mean, it, it's it's feature packed. It's a powerhouse. It's super lightweight. I mean, my eight year olds could pick this thing up. It's like, like 44 pounds for the whole system, and, yep. and you could throw it in the back of a car. I mean, this awesome. thing is so, so versatile. Oh, yeah. Very light, very easy to move around. I, I can lift it, right? So if I can lift it, it's light, okay? Uh, yeah, it's a true so, story. Your hair can lift it, too. Yeah, my hair can lift it. If I use enough hairspray, it could lift the 50, I think, also. Um, the uh, the mixer portion, so we talked about that being the biggest difference, and you see powered by Dynacord there. So a little bit about Dynacord. Anyone who knows, uh, maybe the old Cobra boxes or something like that, very popular, was a highly regarded speaker brand. It still is active. And if Mike, if I'm any, uh, wrong about any of this, please interrupt me, but it's still active to some extent over in Europe. Uh, it was just a more recognized brand there. And what we've done in the US was we brought in Dynacord as our electronic side, uh, as part of that family of EV. So amplification, DSP, that's all now being engineered by Dynacord. And that is part of our EV family. And we're putting that technology into our products moving forward. Um, which is big, so which is big, because I know, it, I know a lot of the old touring products were all Dynacord uh, technology, and it was very powerful stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and there's that picture of that mixer there uh, next to the Evolve. And we actually do bring in some uh, high uh, cost analog mixers, but the technology there is very well regarded. And the effects engines we used in those mixers are tried, true and tested. Um, they really sound spectacular um, in their ability to, you know, the reverb specifically in those units are just phenomenal. They sound Yeah, great. I, I, I I took once we uh, once we had to close the store. I took one of these home to put in my beat laboratory, is what I like to call it, uh, and started playing with all those effect presets. And it, it's just so super clean. And yep. even be able to be able to grab you know this piece of technology and, and tweak the, the effects and combine the effects from there. It's it's super convenient. And this thing just it sounds killer. And and I do I like to use this as a DJ monitor personally because it's compact enough and it still has enough of a punch uh, where I can hear everything. What's so funny, Kevin, you bring that up. As you see behind me, I'm also using a portable column around my DJ room or uh, my studio. And, uh, beat laboratory. Been, beat laboratory, whatever you want to call it. I call it my studio. Um, so I've been telling a lot of customers that I've been speaking with that are looking at more expensive monitors, things like that, and are also mobile DJs. I say, hey, pick up an Evolve 30M. Pick up a small portable column array because... A, you can use it right now. It's going to look really cool on your live streams. And then once you're out gigging again, you'll have now a tool that you can use for events um, once you yeah. once you start working again. So I think that you just said, Kevin, it's an awesome thing. And and you know, for a uh, for a monitor for a DJ room or a, a studio, it really works great because it's already set up for you essentially with uh, with everything that you need. Yeah. yeah. You think about a DJ too, you know, you know, they're doing weddings and things like that. There might be musicians coming in and doing cocktail hours or there might be a, a, a violinist or something during the ceremony. This is a great box to have in your arsenal and bring to those types of gigs to be able to provide that, you know, to add that uh, into your repertoire. So, yeah, it also, you know, don't overlook the fact that it's got um, those effects right uh in and scott's uh note here right the the effects do set it apart and that's really really cool um for karaoke guys as well how many of you guys are doing karaoke out there that don't have any reverbs to put on those vocals you know what let's face it mo most people suck at singing karaoke i'm i'm terrible right steve is the best at karaoke speak, and he's got speak he's, for he's, yourself he's, 
So he's so knowledgeable on vocal processors and vocal effects. I won't even go to that right now. But the point is, <laughs> the the point is, is that adding reverb on those karaoke mics will go a long way to hiding maybe some inefficiencies in in, in the vocal qualities uh, of of right. your crowd so yeah and, and even like you know uh, doing av you know if someone's doing a uh, giving a speech a little touch of that reverb is right. better pleasing to the ear so just having that as an option is great you know yeah. so there, there, it, this really is a very diverse unit and um you know just to expand a little bit if we have the time you know like you said we have the dynacord effects we have 30 different effects different types of reverb delays flanger chorus and that really caters to the musician very much too. Uh, as a guitar player, and I have a board with 25 separate pedals on there to do all of that stuff, to have one unit that I can access all of those effects cuts down on the stuff I have to bring to my gig. You know, uh, you got a lot of guys out there buy a lot of pedals. This eliminates that need, especially doing bar, small club, bringing a duo, acoustic guitar, maybe a drummer, something like that. And we have a variety of presets to cater those different types of instrumentation. Yeah, likewise for, for a DJ, right? Those inputs can be very useful for as a ceremony system, right? If you don't want to drag out a mixer, you can literally drag out an Evolve 30M and you've got a mic for the efficient and the bride and groom, and you've got some backing tracks, and maybe you have to mic up a, a quartet or or something like that, right? You've got enough inputs to get through a little ceremony. You can mix it all from your from your uh, device uh, via Bluetooth, and and it couldn't be cleaner and simpler um, to to get that done. So um, that that thing yeah. can make you a lot of money if if you if you're utilizing all its uh, its flexibility and features. Um, it's it's really a, a really great great. Uh, item. Yeah, evolve is evolve is killer, man. I mean, it, this this whole since it since its launch, it's done very well. And again, like I said, the thirties have have come in and gone right out the same in the same fashion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I've got a few. I've got, I've got a few questions. I know we're we're kind of long here. Uh, this Damn. is a good one. There's, there's a lot good. of info, but yeah. but that's what we. This is why we go live, and this is why we're going to keep going. So so Scott's beating me to the punch. So I'm going to throw out some products that I know don't exist, but but we get a lot of requests for them. So battery powered 21 inch subwoofer Evolve version. <laughs> You know, let's just let's just you know, let's be real here. What's going on? We need we need bigger sub. How Mike, how do I get an eighteen inch on this thing? Mike, and I just want to let you know, just so you know, it's just us here, all right? It's just us. So just for just you're with friends, friends. You're you're sure with friends. Have, have a have a drink, you know, and we're just talking, you know. No one's listening. There's a four there's a four letter speaker brand and a two letter another two letter speaker brand that has a battery powered column. Obviously, it's a it's a lower power um uh, you know speaker. But but I do think there is a is, is significant demand for battery powered PA, and there is a, a demand for 18 inch, 21 inch uh, subwoofers. So so may, maybe you can give us no information at all on that. Yeah, I mean nothing specific, but I will say we hear you, and good things come to those who wait. <laughs> and, and as I, I can say about a lot of the speaker brands that we do carry, um, they they don't make changes very often because they make great products and when you engineer a great product there's not a lot you need to change you know in, yeah. a, in a short period of time and i i get it i mean i wish i could wave a wand and come out with everything that everybody needs right away but that's just not what ev does right we weren't the first ones to market with a column system right and by the time we identified that we really wanted to do it and by the time the Evolve 50 first started shipping, it was three years because we did it right. And, and when we do it right, then we come with a game changer, right? I don't want to come with a me too. Um, so that's the difference uh, between EV. So sit tight, hang in there with us and, and know that we are, we are listening. We've got our, our pulse on that market and we're, we're listening to our users all the time. Um, and, and so we see uh, what you want and, and we, we do our best to, to take what you want and make it even better. So uh, hang in there awesome. with us and uh, one thing at a time, right? Awesome. This was a lot of fun, Justin. This was a, this was a long one, an hour and forty minutes right now, which is which is crazy. But we put a lot of info out there. 
We had a lot of we had a lot of content to cover. That's for sure. It felt like five minutes. <laughs> yeah, it, it, and it did go it did go fast. Believe it or not, I'm looking at the clock. I can't believe how how much uh, longer we went over. So uh, could have watched for us. We hope you we didn't put you to sleep at least. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. I appreciate you uh, coming on to do this with us because honestly, I, I don't think people are aware how close we are to all of our vendors and partners. I mean, we're this is not just. Uh, some company that we, you know, we place orders and you ship them from the fact like we have a partnership, we have a lot of feedback and cross communication and marketing family. and product development. And, and yeah, exactly. We're one big, uh, very dysfunctional family, but we certainly <laughs> do operate like a family. And I certainly cannot wait to see you guys again face to face, hopefully Atlantic City, but you know, let's keep our fingers crossed. Um, mask to mask, I should say. Yeah. Um, but once again, before we sign off tonight, I do want to send our deepest thanks to all of our healthcare workers, first responders, and essential workers out there. Our warehouse crew appreciate you. All of our customers, Scott, for throwing all the comments, Michael as well. You guys are, are helping us. You're the reason we're going to keep doing this, even after we're back in the store open. Just don't tell anyone I won't show up to work some days. Um, Justin, always a pleasure hanging with you. Steve, Mike, thank you guys so much. Thank you, guys. Yeah, and before we, before we sign off, thank you guys very, very much. Really appreciate it. Again, just want to remind everybody, you can win a free pair of ELX200 white powered speakers on our Instagram page. Just go check that out now. Uh, and uh, really just thank everybody for tuning in tonight. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Kevin. I miss you, brother. We'll see you soon. And uh, really had a good time tonight. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And uh, We'll see everybody soon. Kevin, say goodbye, my friend. Take it easy, guys. Don't forget uh, to make sure that you are liking our Facebook page, subscribing to YouTube, ring the bell, all that fun stuff. Instagram, Justin does a great job of handling that. If you have any problems with the content, just message him about me. I don't know anything. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thanks, we'll Thanks, see you soon, all right? All right, guys. Thank you. All right, take care. Bye-bye.